What's up, people? Welcome back to the channel. So I was kind of going back and forth on what what exactly we don't want to do for the beginning of the week, and got you know had a lot of stuff going on this weekend. So I just decided to go ahead and do a regular market watch. This one is not really going to be too much of a theme. Sometimes I kind of have a theme where I talk about certain you know like a certain kind of frame of cards. Right now, I, cards started to come to mind that I know is they're kind of going up. So I just want to talk about them. So with all out the way, please feel free to like, subscribe. If not, it is all cool. We're trying to get a 500 subscribers. Once we get there, I'll be doing a giveaway of two T TCG players gift cards and also be hosting a special tournament and leave a informative slash you know funny or like you know kind of like some kind of good comment below if you know if I like it I'll go ahead and uh, I'll give a shout out in my next video and then I'll add you to a list of people who will be winning something very special when I get to 500 so go ahead and try to you know, leave a comment try to get into that giveaway let's go to get into it battles of legends IP masquerade man so this card right here i ended up holding on to a couple copies this this was like a little bit of a pseudo investment i was like i really I, I felt like they were going to reprint her again and it looks like the the battles of legend was the last one that they did so we're looking at the ultra rare from you know from you know from the chaos impact it's around like eight to nine dollars to be honest like the original one is like re really cool I, I had the original one for the longest time and then i, I just had to get rid of it because i knew it was going to get its reprint they're looking at near mint condition for like uh 862 then it goes to 950 so we are looking about the nine to ten dollar range for the original but to be honest the one i would kind of be focused on is the secret rare it is technically a upgrade to the original and at the same time it does look really 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 nice i believe you get these for about six dollars yeah uh Light played first at about 530. Light played first at 530. So we're gonna be yeah, we're looking at about like the five, like the 550 to about six dollar price point. To be honest, probably at your local someone will be willing to do this for five dollars. I would just go ahead and get this way sooner rather than later because the next card I want to talk about, SP Little Knight, is the perfect card to go with it. To be honest, like it used to be you go to IP Masquerina either into a uh, you would you would use the goddess of the closed world or you would go into a uh, nightmare unicorn and those will give you a lot of value right now sp little knight is the card to do not only will it give not only will ip uh, ip give sp a lot of protection but the little knight will be able to out something on the board as soon as it shows up so right now we're looking at near mint first days are at one one sixteen once that one's gone, it's 120. So we're looking at a solid 120 dollars. The card, the card has been fluctuating a bit. It, it did kind of go down to like kind of like the one of like the 100 dollar range, but then it's slowly been kind of going up, solidifying itself at 120. I really regret not buying this at at 70. I believe it went to 70 at one point. That was the lowest. I was gonna pull the trigger, but I felt like it was gonna go down more. This was really stupid, seeing as how powerful this card is. And Konami is not going to address this. They're gonna wait until either the summer or they're just gonna let it ride and have this be the big reprint of the tin so don't expect this card to really go anywhere because th this is one of those cards that are that's just gonna you're gonna have to deal with in Yu-Gi-Oh and that's just what that's just how it is that honestly that's just how it goes heats of the fire charmer ablaze this one right here I'm, I'm noticing a whole bunch of decks not just fire king using it simply because like it simply because there's a lot of there's gonna be a lot of fire decks well I shouldn't say a lot of fire decks but the fire kings are gonna inherently make a lot of people play fire decks so not only are the fire kings gonna want to have this card for themselves but other decks might want to incorporate into the strategy to try to use it take advantage of it you get a lot of you get the common the rares common and rares for like you know 20 cents the one I want to focus on is the super rare I I, I think I have a copy of this I have to check my bulk because it's, it's been in there for a while this is it's, when these cards get reprinted and an OTS as supers put them to the side guys don't like 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 don't, don't sit there and be like oh it's like whatever no put stuff like this to the side there are a couple there's a couple of cards that you look at and it's like hey, this is actually a pretty good reprint heat of the fire charm plays is a good one I, I had a few of these but you know they, they go as you know as they kind of come back in the meta I think I have one more left we're looking at like five Let's see, yeah, like, so these are French, French. Okay, so what, once we get past all the foreign ones, we're looking at 822, 720. We're looking at pretty much 8 to $9. We're looking at like 8, 840. You probably get this for like $8. So right now, the Super Rare is going for $8. This is, like I said, this is really good. It does, it says two monsters, including a fire monster, so you don't, so you don't have to have a fire. You, you could, you could either summon like an Ash Blossom, if you need Ash Blossom, or you could use something like, you know, you could use Mind Control or Change a Heart or Snatch Deal to take a fire monster, make this and then you could bring back a fire monster so like so like i guess like i'm, I'm looking at this as a depending on how your deck is built you could either use it 
to plus off your opponent's plays, or you could use it to like necessarily break their board. Like you, you know, like you, you could take something with one of the new cards that they gave us to steal, and then you could, you know, use that to link it to Hita, and then you could take something else from the graveyard, allowing you to potentially, like, you know. I want to say do an unknown to gate, but be able to break the board easier, especially if you could take the Garunix or something. So this is actually this is this is pretty pretty interesting to see out here. So if you have these and you're not going to use them, I'll post them up, get your value for them. Underworld, Goddess of the Closed World. We have the I believe it's the link the link two coming, the one that's going to let you like use use more than just one of your opponent's cards to like you know be able to make her and right right to be honest the, the prismatic i think i went over her went over this the prismatic was kind of going crazy and it, it has it hasn't stopped it, it was super low they were kind of in the, they were like right here in the four dollar range then they kind of shot up to nine looks like there's going down a little bit but to be honest it looks like they're going to solidify around the 899 nine dollar point we well, got 25 of them for 895 yeah it's, it's pretty much going to solidify around this point there's a lot of copies and we're looking at 872 895 799 we're pretty much going to be paying eight to nine dollars for this card it it completely makes sense if, if you really if you didn't have this like i have no idea why you didn't just pick up one copy these th this is those cards where you don't need three copies of it you literally just need one copy when when it's low pick up your one copy and if you missed it then guys like you need to focus up like i understand oh i don't need it i don't need it now okay but you might need it later and if you could get it for as low as like two three four dollars and you know it might be useful one day just go to pick it up some sometimes i feel like in Yu -Gi -Oh, us as players, we we screw ourselves over by not recognizing when's the right time to buy things. And yeah, I said, if you miss this, she's probably just going to go up unless she gets a reprint. The Abouts of the Black Witch. This is another card where it's like if you really wanted to run any kind of Snake Eye, you should have got it, you know, like when they when they were at like, you know, almost $20, $25. They were really high. Then they just went down, down, down. The, the lowest they were at was 20 1952 These were at $20 at one point, guys. Now... Near Mint First Dead, 3642, 3669. I said in my last market watch when I talked about her that she has that like she's 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 here now, but once the but once it gets closer to the snake eye stuff, she's just she's just gonna she's just gonna go up. I I, I had I had a, I had one of her when she was at 20 and I was gonna post it and I decided not to and I'm happy I didn't because now I could I could post her in this in this higher price. If 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 you were really planning on playing this deck, you should have just got this stuff sooner. But at the same time, I don't want to blame everyone too too much because a lot of people were playing her at one so you know so like you know you, if you got your one copy you weren't thinking about it but at the same time like you you you, you got to just understand if, if you're going to play a deck like this it's not going to those ratios are not going to be solidified especially when we had the ban list we had all this other stuff that was kind of looming this right here i wouldn't say it was predictable but it just makes sense for a card like this just to start going up, especially when the other decks I want to run it get hit. They need more of her to make it more consistent. So pretty much the ban list and, you know, and the upcoming set have drove you know, Black Witch to like really high. She's getting extremely, extremely hard to deal with. You're looking at almost $40. Yeah, $36.69, 36 Yeah, we're looking at like, yeah, $39, 40 With the $1 shipping, we're looking at $40. She has doubled in price since the last time I talked about her. DD Crow. So these last three cards are just cards that I kind of recommend you kind of keep your eye on, and just, 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 just like I said, just keep your eye on it. This is not something like oh, it's going up, but keep your eye on this because they very much could go up. If you don't have DD Crow, all right, commons for seventy cents from the, uh, for, you know, from the recent pack, you got these super rares in the one in like in the one dollar you know range. You got ultra rares in the one dollar range. Get your DD Crows now before they just start to sky before they skyrocket and you have to pay five six seven dollars for a set of hollows or three to four for a set of commons i really do feel like in the next coming up meta there's going to be more than just dark monsters bestials are really good but bestials don't take care of spells they don't take care of fires they don't take care of freaking water they don't take care of uh, obviously right they they only target dark and light monsters so just like, like 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 just with that alone you're like okay like you know the best deals are really good against certain decks but then there's but then there's other then like there's other situations where maybe you want dd crow so if if, if you feel like you find yourself in situations where you want to banish more than just a darker light then i would just go ahead and focus up find find out which you know which which dd crow you wanted you want to run and i would get your set before they start to go up because i do feel like dd crow is slowly going to start to come back into the meta ghost bell and haunted mansion once transaction rollback and labyrinth starts to you know really become like what we have to worry about ghost spell is gonna be as good as ash blossom we have 
not only is the Labyrinth going to you know, be hit by it, but you also have a lot of other decks that want to like send, special, or recycle from the grave. So just, just having having Ash and Ghost Spell is probably going to be one of the best combinations because like they want to go from the deck, it's x -Nate. You want to go from the graveyard, x -Nate. Bam, done. So I really, I do, I do feel like if, if you don't have your copy, I said there's there's commons. I, I I can see the commons going to a dollar. I can see the these supers, you know, hitting the dollar. Maybe these commons might be 75 cents. But if you want to get these commons where where you could just you know buy like you can buy your whole set for like you know like less than a dollar, I would just go ahead and do it now before you end up paying like dollar fifty for sets. Or if you want to if you want the super rares, like I said, I can see the supers being a dollar, and then all the other different rarities from Red Collection kind of like slowly going up, kind of taking suit from there. So. Right now, I'm, I'm not really speaking too much on, on Ghost Mount Prismatics. You get them for 40 cents, Ultras for 49 cents, Supers for 15 cents. Get these right now before they go up and become is way more hard, you know, to like really deal with. And the last card I want to talk about is Time Tearing Organite. This right here is a personal favorite of mine. I, I'm actually going to be bringing back a certain stun deck that I talked about on this channel before, but I'm going to bring it back totally revitalized because I feel like whatever I was missing. I found it, and it was right in front of my face. Time tearing, well, t t time tearing Morgan is not is not, is, is not what I found. But I very much feel like this whole time I was just I wasn't thinking about new stun. I was I was I was kind of like oh no yeah I was doing runic stun and but I wanted I want to run the old school, you know, inspector border with the freaking fossil dyna stun. I really want to bring that back, and I feel that I found it. One of those cards is Time Terror Morganite. Now, Time Terror Morganite has been going everywhere. At one point, you get it for like three dollars. Now they're in at four. To be honest, these were very, very, very low. At what, what point you get these for like one to two dollars? But now, just every single stun deck slash every player that likes to just lap things is just completely like focused on this card. And it looks like these are not going any lower than three dollars. Near Mint First Dead two ninety nine. Mint for two ninety nine. I like I guess it. I would go ahead and pick up, like I said, if you're thinking about it, I would pick up a set before they go up. If you have one, I would pick up the other two. If you don't want to use these, I would hold on to them because I feel like these are going to shoot up and just become some random super rares that no one was really thinking about, but they end up being a part of a crazy strategy. Even Konami could release a freaking tier one deck that doesn't want to that doesn't want to activate cards from the hand that like really kind of wants to focus more you know on like kind of like stunning but it's still tier one time Tiger morganite could be that card and with the three different effects so many ways to play this card so i would say time Tiger morganite is a card that like if you want to invest i would kind of like if, if you have the money i would you know get like nine copies if you just want to have set for yourself i would get this but at the same time watch out because i feel like time Tiger morganite could be in some kind of crazy random strategy Alright guys, that's it for the video. Peace out, and I'll catch you in the next one.